coming up next on the Jeff Curley Show. His life is like amazing grace. He once was blind, but now he sees his incredible faith-filled journey just ahead. Many are predicting that the worst is yet to come, which is unfortunate, said one person here. Until now, they've enjoyed the reputation of being the nation's icebox. Watched a burglar in his home this morning by webcam. As a journalist of over 25 years, stories are what make my world turn. Reporting live from the Dallas Newsroom tonight, Jeff Curley, Fox 4 News. But in 2008, I took the jump from my familiar life and started a PR firm from my home. We're talking about anyone with a camcorder like the one I'm using becomes a television network. We started slowly growing the company and we now have over a hundred clients and we've branched into the world of live digital broadcasting. I now own eight different TV studios and have a huge team. And the stories that I now get to share are sometimes the most important of my life. Life has a funny way of coming around full circle. This is The Jeff Crilly Show. Well, you talk about somebody who was living life in the fast lane. In the 90s, he was uh, hanging out with big stars like Destiny's Child. Uh, then in the 2000s, he started hanging out with porn stars. And God had a different plan. And God called an audible. Jerry Dale from Gospel First Ministries is in the studio. Thanks for coming on the show. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. Absolutely. Well, let's start at the beginning. Um, were, you, were you raised in the church? I was. I was raised in... Um, Pentecostal, uh, Church of God in Christ um, is kind of how I was brought up. Mom and dad still married um, and they raised me that way. And so I've kind of just been that route. Sure. And the 90s had to be a pretty heavy time because, you know, we're talking about that. The Cowboys were winning uh, Super Bowls and the Stars mm -hmm. were winning the Stanley Cup. And you're getting to hang out with Destiny's Child. OK, tell us about that life. Yeah, so um, I moved here um, 30 years ago uh, this year uh, to go to school at the Art Institute of Dallas. And as I was going to school, I ended up, um, had an opportunity to get into the business um, and to, and I went, majored in music and video business. And so as I had the opportunity to get into the business, um, Sony picked me up. I was working for Sony as an co independent contractor, then a position came open, and so I was able to get in. So this is 93. Uh, 93, 94. Um, and so I get in. And so beginning uh, developing artists were Destiny's Child, Jagged Edge, um, Mariah Carey was putting out uh, Jennifer Lopez. So these were the artists um, that were in my that were nationwide national artists that were assigned to Sony Music. Right. I was a urban marketing manager for the Southwest region. So anytime the artists were in my market, I was with them. Yeah. So, yeah, it was a great time. Uh, couldn't have been any better. I got to see them record their first song. Uh, no, 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 no. Those of y'all who remember uh, that song. Sure. Okay. When you came on my radar screen, and you had to remind me of this, is that I interviewed you in the early 2000s because the city of Dallas, uh, their convention center had rented out to the, it, what was it called? The Adult Entertainment Awards. And when it became known, and it was in the Dallas Morning News, that what is the city of Dallas doing putting their name behind the adult film industry, mm -hmm. uh, you became uh, a household name. I so. did. I did. And so it was, it was interesting because it had never been done before. Um, and so I think what had happened was the, the city had kind of, the guy who was over the Dallas Visitors Bureau, mm -hmm. Convention Bureau at the time, they kind of let him go for, I think, doing business with those, with those clubs. Well, then here I come and the convention center, they let me come in and do that. So it's like, well, how can the city get rid of him, but then let this guy come in here and do these and put, you know, do these awards here. And so, yeah, we, we did the awards. And well, now, and you look back on it, you were, you were kind of, you, you were kind of running off the road, weren't you? Cause what did your parents think about this time in your life? Um, <laughs> he's a heathen, <laughs> so to speak. Right. Um, yeah. So my parents didn't, they didn't understand what uh, the music industry was. They were okay with it, but then going into the adult industry, I don't think they fully understood. It was more of an award show for them versus it being just the adult industry. Uh, because even after I did the the awards, um, I did them two years in a row, and then after that, I actually became a marketing director for one of the clubs here in the city. Um, and so that was kind of they weren't too happy. Okay, so you had a defining moment in your life. Uh, talk about your heart surgery and how that changed your life. So um, 
two years ago, I went in to um, have a quadruple bypass. Um, going into the surgery, I was, you know, praying that God, if this is it, this is it. Not that I want to die because I knew my life wasn't where it needed to be. But if this was it, then I was okay with that. But after the surgery, when I came out is when I did more reflection and more trying to spend time and recommit my life to God. And I was like, God, at this point, I've lived a good life. Those first 50 years, I, you let me do them my way. And so now I'm going to live the rest of my life uh, serving you. Wow. We're going to pull up your website. And as we scroll down the website, tell us about Gospel First Ministries. So Gospel First, our goal is to um, spread the word. Um, I have a I feel like my calling is more of apologetics, um, but apologetics gets a bad rap because it's one of those kind of like the Navy SEAL of of Christianity. Right. And so um, but we want to be loving and we want to be winsome. Right. Because we want to just be able to spread the word, let people know what God can do, because it's God saved me from my life, from all of those things I was doing. Um, and if he could save me, he can save you. He can save and he will save us all. Wow. And uh, Jerry has a very popular podcast. He happens to do it at our network. Let's go ahead and roll a clip. Welcome to No Sugar Coding, where we keep it 100 percent truth, authentic and real. I'm your host, Jerry Dale. And we're going to talk a little bit about what no sugar coating is. No sugar coating is going to be culture and theology. We're going to give you a biblical worldview of what is going on in our culture and how theology is. We're going to give you um, principles that are based from the Bible. We're going to talk about um, challenging your thinking. Um, we're going to give you a bird's eye view, a 30,000 foot view of the world versus your bubble. Because most of us live in a bubble and our view of things is what's around us and surround us when there's so much more to this world. There's so much more to earth. There's so much more to culture and theology than just our little bubble. So we go burst your bubble here on No Sugar Code. Welcome to another episode of No Sugar Coating, where we keep it 100% truth, 100% authentic, and we keep it 100% real. Well, first of all, I love the name of the show. How'd you come up with No Sugar Coating? Um, because all my life, people told me I'm very direct. Mm -hmm. And so I tend to be direct with how I answer things, but I'm learning to try to um, be softer with how direct I am. Because uh, the millennials and the younger generation, they kind of say I'm yelling at them, but I'm not really yelling at you. I'm just sure. direct with you. They don't really understand that. So I said, you know what? Let's do this. But there's no sugar on this. It's mm. all seasoning, right? It's going gonna, it's gonna to taste good. It's going to be for you, you know, um, but it ain't going to be sweet going down. And, and what kind of guests do you look forward to having on your show? So on the show, we um, it'll be real. It'll be real people with real stories. Um, so right now, uh, the first couple of episodes, um, we have professors. Um, one, we're talking about dinosaurs. So we're talking about how dinosaurs fit into the Bible. So a lot of questions people have, like, are they real? Are they not real? And so forth. So we have dinosaurs. Um, we have another professor where we talk about the Holy Spirit, what the Holy Spirit's like. Is it real? Is it not real? Who is the Holy Spirit? How does the Holy Spirit help us um, and guide us and so forth? So it's those type of things. And then on the up, we have another episode coming up where we're actually talking to um, those who do um, who do counter sex trafficking. So it's a group of uh, military people who go in to other countries. They actually save people who are being persecuted with um, Christianity, but they also go in and they save people, uh, women who are girls who are being sex trafficked too. They go in wow. and rescue them and bring them out. So it's an organization here, it's local, um, and they do that. So we've got a plethora of different type of things. And those on the theology side, and then we've got culture side, and we'll talk about um, culture as well. We'll talk about, um, I have a, a co-host, and so she's um, she's like, as I'm African-American, um, she's Anglo-Saxon, trying to be mm -hmm. you know cor correct with it, right? Um, but we come from two different worlds. She grew up in South Lake. I grew up in small town Oklahoma. You know, the thing about me is I was able to be, um, um, I, I grew up on, 
that black side of town, mm-hmm. but yet I lived on the white side of town. So I, I was able to go back and forth, right? Yes, so I was yes. able to do both. And most people don't do that at such a young age, right? It's mostly when they get older in the right. college. And so we have so many similarities, even though she's from South Lake and I'm not, um, that people don't understand. I mean, she's been through some things throughout her, her life story, her journey that like kind of parallel, right? right and right. you see that and then you're like, but if you look at her, you would never know because you're thinking, oh, she's South Lake. She's this. She right. Life has been good for her. Da, 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 da. And it's not like that. It's it's um, well, very interesting. And I find you, I think your timing is perfect because uh, the Gallup poll a couple years ago for the first time in Americans' history, more people identified themselves as unchurched than churched. And so I think the pandemic uh, got people out of the habit of going to church. And so there are some people who are just not getting any kind of positive messages about uh God or Christ at all. Mm-hmm. And I think it's because there's confusion, right? With um, a younger gen- the younger generation, they don't know. You've got people out here telling them this, telling them that. And one of the things that the younger generation doesn't do is read the Bible. Like they don't read it for themselves, you know, because nowadays we go to church and it's on the screen. Mm-hmm. So we just take what they're saying on the screen and we just kind of, that's it. Like we don't really spend any time in the word ourselves. And so th- there's a lot of confusion. And so it's easier to be like, well, I don't know if I want to follow this. I don't want to follow that. There's so many denominations out there. I don't know which one's real, which one's not. Is this denomination going to heaven? Is this one going to heaven? You know, they don't know. Yes. And that's why you need someone who, one, has a theology and the information, but you also need somebody who is very authentic. And that's what no sugarcoating is. We're 100% authentic, 100% truth, and 100% real with the information that we're going to provide people. Awesome. Okay, so in the little time we have left, uh, for the person who's not watched your show, what do you want to say to them to convince them to start to tune in, like, subscribe, and share? You already have um, a nudge that you're feeling about God. We all know God is real. General revelation tells us that. So everybody knows there is a God. I'm just asking you, watch the show, come see, get the information, and then read your Bible a little bit. That's it. Just do that and let God do the rest. Outstanding. Well, thank you so much for your story and your testimony. Thank you. And uh, we're going to end with the website, which is gospelfirstministries.org. The great Jerry Dale. Thanks for coming on the show. Thank you. Thank you. That's it for now. We'll see you next time.